Howdy y'all. Hi guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. <laughs> from Ryan Loves Angela. RNA Music, your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and lesson studio. Dang, trucks outside. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Texas, which is where we are right now today, but this weekend, we won't be in Texas. No. We're leaving Texas oh, forever. No. Not really forever. But anyways, <laughs> Don't it, is, say stuff like that. it is time to answer your questions. <laughs> Let's get to it. Yeah, it's our anniversary. So I got these sweet, uh, sweet t-shirts custom made. Right? Ryan loves Angela. From two hot chicks. Two hot chicks. Canton, Texas made it for us. Yes. You wanna tell the story? Oh, of the shirts? Yeah. Okay. No, so, of the two hot chicks. Of the two hot chicks. Tell Once the two hot chicks. Time, there was one chick and she decided to find another chick. No. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> The story, the, the story. ballad of two hot chicks. The ballad. I want to give it back forever. You continue. Okay, so um, my parents, a long time ago, my parents, they'll be celebrating their 40, say I'm, I'll be 41, 42nd wedding anniversary in August, August 18th. And so long ago in a galaxy far, far away, well, at least 40 years ago. In Texas. In Texas. Um, my parents, of course, met, blah, blah, blah. But my dad, I don't know when or how or what made him think of this or if it was, because my dad's not artsy craftsy, so I don't really know the actual story behind he's it. He's sportsy coachy. Yes, he's very sportsy coachy. Um, Dallas Cowboys. Anyways, so he made a shirt for my mom. And the shirt says Mitch, because my dad's name is Mitch or Mitchell, loves L-U-V. L U B S. It's weird because I'm seeing it backwards. Incorrectly spelled. Yes, loves Vanessa because that's my mother's name, and he wore it like all the time. And I remember it vaguely because I was really little, and of course he got a lot bigger and muscular, and so the shirt didn't fit him as well as it did whenever he was like in his early 30s. But he got bigger and more muscly in his 40s. <laughs> yes, he did. As opposed to his, his early 30, 30s. His early 30s. Um, so, um, but I remember stumbling upon this shirt, um, and remembering it and seeing pictures of my dad in it in family albums and stuff. So anyways, I confiscated it. So, so in my twenties, I wore it like all the time. I uh -huh. did. All the time. <laughs> I wore it all the time. And everybody's like, who's Mitch and who's Vanessa? Cause we know your name is Angela. I'm like, it's my mom and dad. And he made it like before they got married and in the seventies and he still had it. And I still have it to this day. So Ryan thought it would be a really great idea for our 20th wedding anniversary to recreate the Mitch Loves of Vanessa shirt in a Ryan Loves Angela shirt fashion. With and the same font. Same exact font. And a shirt that extremely that feels like similar. it's from the 70s. It really does. It's that really soft, plush, um, God, my, arm, my hand, arms look so like so muscular here. <laughs> Your arms so are manly. muscular. Your arms are muscular. <laughs> so, anyways, it, it's very similar to the shirt. Um, mine has on um, the Mitch, like in between, it has like holes here and it has holes around the collar. So I stopped wearing As it. As a shirt like, from 1978 would do. Right. I stopped wearing it like five or six years ago, maybe even lo uh, longer than that ago, um, because I didn't want it to be just completely destroyed. So I have it folded up at the very bottom of one of my dresser drawers. Um, so yeah, we had these recreated. We'll show you a picture. Yeah, we still have the shirt. So. We still have the shirt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I need to find a picture. I was going to message my mom today and ask her, look through the photo albums, or if you get a chance to look through the photo albums, look for the picture of dad. Because I believe there's a picture, and I might be mistaken about the shirt now that I actually think about it, but there's a picture of my dad wearing the Mitch Loves Vanessa shirt. And like, I'm, he's holding me, but I'm inside the shirt and my head's popping out like that. And he's holding me like this uh, in the shirt. I believe it's that shirt that he's wearing. Um, which I just, I, I love because, you know, to have an actual picture of him actually wearing it would be great. So, so there's the story. Ta -da! We got a lot of compliments in on this on our, we did on our anniversary day, which we was two days ago. Yes. We went to Dollar General to pick up the boys some food, <laughs> whatever. 
and um <laughs> that sounds so bad um but hey, anyway they do and we walked in and one of the cashiers because the cat all the cashiers know us now um they were, she was like oh my gosh y'all are so cute y'all are so stinking cute and um one of the ladies she was like what L let me guess like a, a customer yeah, not a, customer a cashier in line. she was in line she was like let me guess y'all are newlyweds and I was like, no, <laughs> not even close. And the cashier said, well, how years. long have y'all been married? And they were like, 20 years. And they were like, what? What is your secret? <laughs> like, y'all are dressed alike and married 20 years and y'all still like each other? You know, it was so funny. I'm like, yeah, because. Because Ryan's awesome. And Angela is even more awesome. Is even more awesome. <laughs> Super awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. There you go. A little history answer the question. preamble for the FAQ. Let's answer some questions, though. But I think it's pretty cool. So now you're going to see us wearing these shirts all the time. Be like, oh, yes. and now you know the story. Now you know the story. If you watch this Ask RNA, you'll know the story. The full story. Y'all are special. Yes. Mike Goodman with the first question. Angela and Ryan. Deep question, Angela. You ready? Ready for it. Captain Crunch or Frosted Flakes? Ooh. I like to call them Fro-Fro Flakes. Yes. I always say, yeah, you want some Fro-Fro Flakes? Mm -hmm. It's just fun. Fro-Fro Flakes. Yes. Because I think one of our boys called them that. I think they did. <laughs> Nicholas already did this. Fro-Fro Flakes? Yeah. That's the Fro- It's the Fro-Fro Flakes. It's the Fro-Fro. Fine, you can have some Fro-Fro <laughs> Flakes. I will get you some Fro-Fro Flakes. It reminds flakes. me of a meme I saw this morning of this little cat. This little kitten. It's a little bitty gray kitten and its mouth is completely covered in like milk. Like this. And it's like that moment whenever your child wakes you up at 3 a.m. And the caption on the bottom says, I froze up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So that's yeah, what my favorite Fro-Fro Flakes. I, fr I froze up. Froed up. All right. Captain, um, Captain Crunch, Crunch or Fro-Fro Flakes? Fro-Fro Flakes. I love Frosted Flakes, but the sogginess of Frosted Flakes, fast. you have to eat them like immediately. 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 Um, but Captain Crunch is probably my go-to. Now, I have to preface this with, I don't like the original Captain Crunch. I don't like the original. Like the plain Captain like Crunch? Like the plain, you know, from the 70s Captain Crunch. Talk about... Like that's been around forever. Tear up your mouth. Jack oh, you man. up. I On rather... your third bowl, <laughs> it's like, oh God! Yes, <laughs> it's so it's like, I love it, oh. but my mouth, I can taste blood. My mouth's hating it. Yeah, totally hating it. Um, I like peanut butter Captain Crunch. That's mm. my favorite. So I, if it was peanut butter... No, if it's the original over Frosted Flakes, Frosted Flakes wins. Frosted Flakes wins. Yeah. It does, because they're... But if you factor... Fantastic. If you factor in... <clears throat> Peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Hands down. And uh, wins time after time. I like me some Crunch Berries. Oh, Crunch Berries are That's good. Those I like the. I like it when they're just because they're the berries. little hay bale size ones that jack your mouth. Like if they're it's the brutal. round ones, the round Captain Crunch, like the berries or the peanut butter, they bad. don't do it. But it's those little hay bales. Don't I don't know what they're mouth. supposed to be. It's barbed wire. <laughs> Sugar-coated barbed wire. Yes. In your mouth. It is. It's like little, little parts of, you know, shrapnel. <laughs> yeah. Little pieces of brutality in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. I like them both. Yeah. Personally, I mean, there are times where, like, I really want some frosted flakes. Yeah. I like my fro-fro flakes. I get a hankering for them. And then, uh... You know, I like my Captain Crunch too, but really I like Lucky Charms more. Oh yeah, he loves Lucky well, Charms. I, I, I love me some Lucky, Lucky Charms, Charms, man. I can't stand I like the marshmallows. I can't stand the Just marshmallows. Just the marshmallows. <laughs> Ugh. I haven't so eaten gross. real uh, cereal in so long. Because it's, been... like it's like hardened um, cotton candy with really mm. bad dye in it. <laughs> it's super good for you. Because weird artificial bitterness that... <sighs> yeah. Both of those sound really good right now because I've been cutting out sugar. I haven't had yes. many sugar or real carbs. Yeah, Although I did have a really donut this morning. Any. Angela. For our anniversary, I had a donut. Mm -hmm. Treat I, yourself. I feel guilty. And really, I feel yeah. guilty and happy at the same time. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there you go. Thanks, Thanks for the question, Mike. Uh, next question, Stephen Scharf. Here's one for you, a question of all questions. What about lag acoustic guitars? <laughs> also, what's your thoughts on question orange amps? Questions. I'm in the market for a new amp, and orange amps are definitely on my list. Mm. <laughs> I 
Question of all questions. Interesting. Captain mm -hmm. Crunch or Fro Fro Flakes? <laughs> right. <Christian> <laughs> um, I really don't have any experience with lag acoustic guitars. I don't think I've ever even touched one, let alone played it. Mm. So I don't know. I can't I can't answer that one, uh, Stephen. Um, next time I come across one somewhere, I'll have to definitely check it up and, and play it. We're going to, on our little trip this weekend, we're going away. He will <laughs> probably check out some music stores. Yeah, I'm going to go back to <clears throat> the great evil <clears throat> store that I used to work at just to go in there. Yeah, I used to work at Guitar Center in Tulsa a long time ago. So I'm going to go in there and be like, I remember working here. What a like hell hole. 11 years ago or 12 years ago. I remember cleaning the toilets here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, but there's also another guitar store in Bixby, Oklahoma, that I kind of like to go check out. It looks real swanky. It's all about the SIRs and the PRSs and all that kind of, you know, cork sniffer guitars. Mm, yeah. Which, if you have one, that's fine. Doesn't mean that everybody that owns one is a cork sniffer. Yeah. Because I want some. But, uh, you know, so. This but if I come rain. across. <laughs> if I come across. <laughs> This one smells like a 1987 Paul Reed Smith. Wait, 86. It's an 86, yes. right? The age, wood. <laughs> it smells like wood. Woody goodness. Yes. Um, but if I come across, and there's a couple of other uh, music stores in Tulsa that when we first moved there, I went and kind of checked them out. Some little mom and pop joints. Some of them have closed by now, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that I'll probably go. But if I come across one, I will we'll take a peek. Um, thoughts on orange amps? Well, uh. <laughs> oh, sorry. See like that RNA price tag? <laughs> That's real cute, right? Mm -hmm. I like orange. You got a little mini pearl action. Going. A little mini pearl. <laughs> old school. Yeah. Uh. You're old school if you know who mini pearl is. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think a lot of our viewers are old school, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, I like the orange amps. We really only carry two lines of amps here at RA Music currently. There we go. <laughs> uh, orange and Devil Cat. Mm -hmm. Now back in the early days, it was Orange and Jet City, which I think I still have a Jet City here actually. Yep. Uh, and some Randalls. Randall never did sell very well for us though. Um, and I like, you know, I have a history with Randall. I used to play them. Um, we just, they didn't sell. <laughs> I just couldn't, I have one sitting here that I'm like, it's been here for a while, uh, you know. We're gonna do something with that. Mm -hmm. Orange has always done really well for us, particularly the Crush series, which is you know the smaller affordable practice amps. Like this little dude. This little dude's like ninety nine bucks. We sell these like all day long, all day, all the time. You know, kids getting their first amp, or you know, we have guys. Grandparents come in. Yeah, we have grown uh, grown players. Yeah. Who like have a big like a rocker verb or something, but like you know what? I want one in my office, <laughs> and they can put this little guy on their desk at their office because they mm -hmm. love orange. You know? Or they can put it in the travel travel trailer if they're oil guys. They can keep yep. it in their truck if they're truckers. They can. Mm -hmm. It's just all kinds of there. Yeah. So we sell a lot of the stuff. crush series stuff. We've sold some of the micro uh, darks and micro terrors. I had a dark terror. Um, we haven't. Well, we sold. Like a gym root tear for somebody, and we ordered in an OR30, which was pretty sick. Way back in our channel, you could go find those. Um, yeah, but I, I think they're great. You know, they have a very specific sound. I mean, an orange sounds like an orange, mm -hmm. just the way like a Marshall has sounds like a Marshall, and a Fender sounds like a Fender, and a Boogie sounds like a Boogie. You know. Yeah. Um, where's there's one that um that I've been wanting for a while for myself. Uh, they have a little 15 watt tube amp. It's not the Terror. What is it? It's on the tip of my brain. I can't think of the name of it. TA-15? Not the TA-15. I don't know. I'll put it on the screen. Anyways, I think they're great. Um, you know, and if you get into the UK made, you know, top end stuff, like a, a rocker verb or mm -hmm. something, or a thunder verb. Those things are amazing. My buddy Christian, who has the studio oh, yeah. recording this studio here in town, awesome. <laughs> he had uh, he had like a Mark II rocker verb. It's like Iron Man. The Mark II. He had a Mark III. Mm -hmm. He had a Mark I mm -hmm. rocker verb. He had a thunder verb, and I would go over to his studio and play on my Thundercats. Thundercats. Oh. 
it was it was so good. Now they're get they're pricey. That's the thing. Once you get to the UK <clears throat> upper level ones, they're not cheap. Mm. They are some money unless you can come across a good deal on a used one. But uh, yeah, they're great. I like them. All right. Uh, yeah, orange should be on the list. They're not super fancy. There's not ten thousand different modeling and reverbs and delays, and it's you know you plug into it and you get what you get. But mm -hmm. they're killer, man. So I highly recommend them. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the question, Stephen. Next question, Joe McCarthy. Hey, Joe. Where are you going with that gun in your hand? What is the red Tele style guitar with that looks like TV Jones Filtertron pickups over your right shoulder, Ryan? Oh, this guy? Uh, let's not drop it. Especially on Lala. On Four Lala. Is okay. <laughs> We've actually answered this before, I'm pretty sure. This is a guitar that I have here on consignment for my good friend Ken, whose son Levi takes drum lessons here. Hi, Hi Ken and Levi. So this is a Caleb Strohshine, Strohshine, C, C Stro Customs. That's what the little sticker says. C Stro Customs, C Stro. <laughs> like Mike Stro. Uh, hand built by Caleb Strohshine. So Caleb is a guy I know that works out at uh, Action Sound, which is some good friends of mine, uh, guitar shop, probably about 45 minutes away. Mm -hmm. They do all kinds of repairs and luthier work and mm -hmm. all kinds of that stuff. Like if, if you need your guitar fixed, if you got your neck broken in three places, like snapped, like snap city, you could take it to them and they'll fix it and like it was brand new, like it's never been broken. Yeah, so those guys are great. So kind of on the side, Caleb will build mostly T styles and S styles, Strats and Tele style guitars. He's made some other ones, but um, you know. So he built this for my buddy Ken. I think it's all, it's, it, is, it is all nitro, like a nitro whacker. It's, you know, slightly relic in some spots. And yeah, it's got the TV Jones pickups in it. So this is here for sale available. It is $1,000. If you're interested, one thousand dollars, right? A thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Now, originally it was more than that because it was of custom made and all that kind of stuff. Just one guy building them, not pumped out on machines, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is the Seastro Custom. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, I, I keep saying one of these days I'm gonna do a demo of his guitar, and yet I keep not doing it. I'm gonna stand up to do this. Right. So I don't drop it on myself. Or Lala. Or Lala. They're not conducive to a lot of racks. A lot of other racks. Let alone, what am I gonna do with uh, a gun rack? rack. Let's get you. Uh, so there you go, Joe. I'm sure a lot of people had the same question. It's mm -hmm, come up, but mm -hmm. all right. Question number two: Do you carry the EMG 52T system for tellies? Mm-hmm. And two notes should pay Vanna White or er, Angela for displaying their product. Yeah, they really should. Yeah. She's a great product <laughs> display er. er. er, er, er. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything EMG currently makes, we can get it. We are a full line EMG dealer. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have those on hand here because you know they they make a lot of pickups. Yeah. And for me to have them in stock on hand, like in the in the back room. Would be a lot of money, yeah. a lot of our money sitting in a back room. So uh, I can get them though with EMG. They don't have them stocked. Up. They don't have them stocked up in a warehouse either. People put it in order and they go okay, and then they go build the pickups. Yeah, I mean they're built to order when you order them. Um, so, but yes, we can absolutely get those uh, 52 T's for tellies. So if you want one, just let me know. Or if anybody wants anything from EMG. <laughs> If they want to support a real mom and pop shop, let us order it for you and we'll get it to you. That's and you'll get a sweet uh, RNA you know, business card. Mm -hmm. And we'll sign it. <laughs> Thanks for the questions, Joe. Next question, just fun guitar. New questions. Whom do you think is the most underrated singer, Angela? Me. Oh. Me. I think Angela is also the most underrated singer ever. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, I love hats and wear caps slash beanies a lot. Much like yourself, how long have you been into hats? <laughs> uh, Angela, 
Who's the most underrated singer right now, in your opinion? Right now, in my opinion. Oh, my God. Other than yourself. Um, Who doesn't have, get enough cred? I, I'd have to go with... Miranda uh, Lambert. No. Okay. Everybody here is Miranda Lambert, like, everywhere. Um, I would have to go with Natalie Grant. Natalie Grant. Because that woman can sing. Good choice. Like, oh my good lord. And I've heard her live and she sounds like the flipping album. Like, she is one person that she takes her craft very seriously. And her voice is like crystal. But she's not a diva. But she, no, she's not a diva. She is so down to earth and hilarious and wonderful and sweet and her husband's amazing her husband's a um right phone you're lying it's a scam verify your listing they're liars uh so yes natalie um, grant's husband natalie grant's husband bernie herms is a writer, producer, like he works with Josh Groban. He's worked with the London Philharmonic. He's worked with, I mean, most of the songs like that we know of in Christian country music industry, he's written like yeah. a lot of them. He's worked Hits. with um, John just Mayer. The, he's yeah. worked with, I mean, he's worked with many, many people. He's yeah, not um, just with the Christian artists. No, across the, across the board. Um, and he doesn't get, no one knows who he is. He's just like this kind of ghost. And you might see him on the stage playing piano for somebody um, at the Grammys or at the Dev Awards. It's the Christian equivalent of the Grammys. Yeah, the Christian um, Grammys. But yeah, Natalie Grant is stinking ridiculous. There's a song called um, Speak the Name. It's a Christian song. Um, Corin Hawthorne is an up-and-coming Christian artist. Um, she has an amazing voice, very low alto voice. I like it because that's my, uh, she's, she speaks my language in the range. Um, but it, if you look up Speak the Name by Corin, K-O-R-Y-N, Hawthorne, spelled like you traditionally would spell Hawthorne. With an E at the end? Yes. Hawthorne. And then featuring Natalie Grant. Or go, and go, go to the Dove Awards performance. Woo! I played it for my parents when we were down in, um, for my nephew's first birthday. And both, and my sister's an amazing singer too. And my parents, my dad has a great voice too. And we were sitting there like, I was like, right? And they were like, what? We didn't even know that Natalie Grant can hit that or have that much power. I'm like, yeah. I mean, all of her songs are like that. And it's been that way for a long time. She's been performing and been in, you know, record selling industry since the 90s and no one really knows who she is um but she is like she's sick i mean like particular. and you can follow her on instagram yeah and she's hilarious and fun and sweet and so is her husband but yeah i would say hands down 100 percent. i mean she would blow almost i think most everybody give them every single vocalist a run for their money it would intimidate them probably yeah once she started singing, they're like, oh, crap. I yeah. got it. I got it. She's, she's that good to me. I mean, not like operatic. Like, you know, some people, you have different categories depending on how right. the power of their singing. Opera singer is different. But thing. the soul, she has soul and she can hit those runs, but she doesn't do it so much where you get annoyed with her like Christina Aguilera. But she has that power. Like, what? It's amazing. Yeah. Ready yeah. to go. Good pick. Thanks. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, Ryan, I love hats and wear caps and beanies a lot, much like yourself. How long have you been into hats? How long have I been into hats, Angela? Uh, forever. Yeah, before we met. Yeah, you were wearing a baseball cap outside my English class when you were waiting for me and you had that gray poncho thing. Yeah. I'm going to get another one. You had like a kitten again. hat or something. It was, like a, it was like a legit trucker hat that you had on. Yeah, probably. It's like some co company. It's probably my cousins. The like, yeah. one in the picture. Yeah. In the picture of me and you holding Caleb. And... Yeah. Right. That was the Lolly Paints. Yeah, I think it was that hat. Yeah, it was like a company. Lolly hat. Paint Company. <laughs> um, pretty much forever. Uh, at least, at least me too. since college. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I back to like my senior year, I guess. 
Well, I started growing my hair out when I was a senior. My hair got really long in college. Mm -hmm. And I think at that phase where it started up, because you get those phases where you're growing it out where it's like, it looks okay. And then it's like, that doesn't look so good. And you just got to like Cover it grow in. through it to get, you know. Yeah. So I think when I first started growing my hair out when I was young. Uh, but bandanas were really big in the mid to late 90s. Oh, bandanas, yeah. you know, so there was always a lot of bandana action, not Band like game banger bandanas, <laughs> like, these, like East Texas band white band. guy bandana. Yeah. Um, you know, bandanas were a thing. Caps were a thing. Beanies are more recent. Mm -hmm. I haven't really worn beanies a lot until Angela. Well, until she started crocheting them a couple of years ago. Right. And now I'm actually really upset. It's been about 10 years. I'm really mad <laughs> because my favorite beanie that you've seen, it's like two-tone gray. It's like lighter gray and dark gray. I can't find it. Yeah. I have somehow lost my favorite beanie ever. Oh, no. I have like three or four other lolly, lolly, lala, lolly's loops Lolo. beanies. I have several other Angela beanies that she's made me, but my favorite one I can't find right now. Mm. But yeah, it's pretty much forever. So when I was young, it was like I was growing my hair out longer, and it was how the phases. Is now it's like I don't have as much hair. Now, as I did when I was 19 mm -hmm. or 20 or 21, I don't think I do. <laughs> well, there's less for sure than when I was 20. Right. At 43. So now it's like, ah, uh, and everyone, everyone, I cut my hair short, I never knew what to do with it. Cause I never really liked it short, mm -hmm. but I also don't really need to wear it long anymore. Uh, so I'm just like, let me just put on a hat. Yeah. It's He's kinda, not that guy. Yeah. He's holding on to that back nap. Yeah, no, no. I'm not going to have a little mini ponytail in the back. and Don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, I mean, if you have that, he's not good. That. <laughs> he, good. He's not that guy. He I'm can't, not that guy. He can't support it. I can't rock that Some look. guys can. Some dudes can pull that off. I am not one of those. <laughs> so, pretty much for quite a while. Yeah. 20, 20 plus years, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but now I can't find my favorite one. It makes me sad. I'm always looking for the right hat though, but hats are funny because sometimes you get one, you're like, oh, I like the way that one looks, or I like the logo. Yeah, that's why I always wear this one. And you get it, and it's like, that doesn't feel good on my head. My Chip and Joanna Gaines hat, my Magnolia hat, I love this hat. See, it's I don't, like, it doesn't fit me good. If it's, if it's almost too big for my, for my, and I try to tighten it, but it doesn't fit right when it's tightened. It fits right, but it doesn't, it's loose. It doesn't fit good. Loosey goosey. I've got a bunch of hats that I don't wear. Mm -hmm. Because they don't they don't fit right they don't feel good. Now I've got a Duck Dynasty hat that I actually really like. Yeah, I know. He's it's worn what, that I'm out. Five hundred. <laughs> there's five hundred videos of me wearing this Duck Dynasty hat. Not because I love Duck Dynasty or you know I'm not even a hunter. You... Camera stopped. You love Duck Dynasty. I watched like you one went through season. A phase. Maybe a little bit. But yeah. really, the cap was really comfortable. I still, I still have it. And you went back to your do rag stage. I went back to my do rags. Yeah. Which was popular when I was I know. a freshman in college. <laughs> Everything's cyclical. It comes and goes. Comes and goes. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm really enjoying legacy hats. Was it? Yep. Legacy. Legacy. Yeah, WWW. I'll show the, I'll show the inside of that hat. Yeah, that it's hat's dirty. nasty. <laughs> www.legacy92.com. Yeah. I'm going to take it off my hat to see what kind it is. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of the legacy hats. My <laughs> my new SFA hat I got is a legacy. I'm like I'm buying it because I know it's gonna feel good. This is this this one I've been wearing for a while is the most comfortable one. Anyways, so mm -hmm. forever. Thanks for the questions, Jess Fine Guitar. You should be getting some beanies soon, any day now. Yeah. I mailed them already, so we're looking forward to an unboxing video. You guys go subscribe to Just Fun Guitars channel, <laughs> and you can see an unboxing of some RNA goodies. There. All right. Next question. Psycho G. Mm -hmm. Psycho. Not sicko. Psycho. I just can't call it hair metal. To me, it's hair rock. In the 80s, we called it priest. In the 80s, we called priest, Metallica, Slayer, etc. heavy metal. Or just plain old metal. Right. What do y'all call it? <laughs> and to Ryan, why are Schecter guitars and basses so darn good? Your thoughts, please. Hashtag KTMA. Hey, BBM. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Honeymoon Tulsa. Yeah, um, I guess back in the day we called it metal, but they started calling that thrash metal. Mm. Like hair metal was always I just hair metal. It rock. Hair metal was always hair metal, like Bon Jovi and you know Motley Crue and you mm -hmm. know he calls it hair rock. 
I don't know. See, I think Metallica, Slayer, you know, Megadeth, that's thrash mm -hmm. to me. Thrash metal. Or glam rock. Not Metallica. No, I mean like hair rock. Yeah, glam, glam, glam rock. rock. Yeah. Okay, so on to the Schecter question. Why are Schecter guitars and basses so darn great? Well, that's a great question. A couple of reasons, I think. They have been in the business for a while now. Yeah. And they have built a lot of guitars and basses in their time. Like 40 years, right? Yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. 76? 76? Yes. 43? 76. They started in 76. Yeah. 42 years. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I think the current current iteration of Schecter guitars and basses, the reason, one of the reasons I think they're so good is, of course, they've been doing it a long time, so they know how to design and build guitars. Right. Um, but when you're talking about import guitars coming from an overseas factory, the thing that Schecter does really well is, you know, at least in America anyways, in the States, all the guitars come to Schecter HQ in California, and they've got a room full of dudes, mm -hmm. like techs, maybe some dudesses, I don't know, but... Where I just, that's what they do. They, every single guitar that comes in, whether it's you know a two ninety nine guitar or a thirteen forty nine mm -hmm. bass, gets taken out of the box by a Schecter tech, and they go over it and they file the nuts if they need to. They you know file the frets if they need to. They they take care of it. Right. Again after the factory, because let's just be clear, sometimes factories QC isn't fantastic. Mm -hmm. As someone who's factory directed guitars before, factory QC is not that good no, most of the time. So, great. Sometimes. so that the you know the extra filter that Schecter puts into it, their guys taking care of everything, and then it goes out to a dealer. You know, at still great prices. So I think um, their techs, you know, the, the employees of Schecter who take care of all the guitars. You know, I, I don't know that every company gets that. You know what I mean? Sometimes right. it just comes in from a factory and goes to a warehouse and then goes to a dealer. And it's like, well, it could be a lot of problems. So I, I think um, that has a lot to do with it. The QC and quality control at Schecter. Something floating in the air right there. <laughs> and I snatched it out of the air. I was like listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, kai -yai. I, I think that has a lot to do with it. They use good components. They use good quality stuff. Right. too so you know good at price points right you know the the 299 Schecter is not going to be using the same materials as a you know 899 Schecter mm -hmm. or 999 Schecter right. and to expect that is just silly mm -hmm. right but at that 299 price point i think they're 299 or they have some 259 we sold a lot of the c6 deluxes for students that are like 269 yeah. street price right. a lot of those and i think for 269 they're fantastic guitars anyways cool yeah and if you get one of their usa made ones or their custom shop mm -hmm. forget about it those are ridiculous because they have guys who know what they're doing there you go i can see that check 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 mm -hmm. uh, i have a couple of checkers myself all right there's jack sweet sweet carbs <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> you should have seen me in california when i had carbs for the first time in weeks mm -hmm. oh my god by the way, it's Thursday morning, guys. We're shooting this way early. <laughs> so we can have this up before we leave for our hashtag honeymoon Tulsa trip mm -hmm. tomorrow. I'm so excited to no. leave Canton and go away. <laughs> um, <clears throat> next question, multi sooner one. Has Angela ever listened to Nora Jones? Yes, I have. I went through a big Nora Jones phase back in the day. Um, early 2000s I guess mm -hmm. when she was really popular <clears throat> and um, I like her stuff I, I like people who um, kind of branch out but kind of bring the old school flair back you know that they're kind of because it was just like everybody sounded the same in the late 90s early 2000s and then Nora Jones popped out with um, her albums and it was very smooth you know I like that. Retro Soul? Yeah, that a, a little bit. Retro Soul? And she, I don't know when the album came out. I don't know. It was mid-2005 to 10, somewhere in there. But she did like a collaboration with all these different artists. 
And one of them was Willie Nelson. Oh, yeah. And she had this whole, her whole entire album was her with a bunch of people. But they were like some really big names. Like Bonnie Raitt was on there. Willie Nelson was on there. Like all these great people. So, um, yeah, I liked that. That was really, that was really awesome. So, yes. I yes, have heard indeed. Nora Jones. I have heard Nora Jones. Yeah. Because Angela's heard Nora Jones. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great question, man. Yeah, thanks. Final question. I'm going to have to go grab a guitar for this, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Uh, Carlos Lamas. Thanks for answering my questions. Dude, Angela has got some guns. Yeah, she showed off her guns last week. <laughs> yeah. She does have some guns. Okay, Ryan, which guitar do you think is the most iconic of rock music slash metal? Mm -hmm. Stratocaster, Telecaster, Les Paul, or something else? <laughs> Again, love your videos. Hashtag KTMA. Wow. Great question, Carlos. Mm. Mm -hmm. Probably... I'm going to have to say Les Paul. Yeah, I was going to say Les Paul. Because I'm looking yeah. again. Strat is not necessarily rock metal. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, telly. it kind of... Like Telly? No. no. I mean, there are, like, Jim Root plays a telly. And... But it seems like everybody has that same Les Paul cut. That Yeah, for that sure. Metal. Like this. <laughs> like this. <laughs> how metal is that? Or how rock? Rock. Rock. Rock the abstract. Okay, so this is not a Les Paul. Um, my Les Paul is at the house. Mm -hmm. But we were just talking about why Schecter guitars are so amazing. Look at that back. Want to touch the honey. Oh my Look at that. God. Look, at that back. <laughs> Look at that back. It is so pretty. <gasps> yeah, it is. Squeaky, squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. <laughs> the strap locks sound like our chihuahua. Um, I gotta say, I, for sure, the Les Paul. I mean, Yes, Jimi Hendrix played a Strat. Yes, Eric Clapton played a Strat. But he also played a Les But Paul. they're not necessarily metal. Yeah, they're I would. They're more like classic blues, rock. Yeah, blues rock. Yeah, even Jimmy was more like. Yeah, he's more like, like blues, blues rock, yeah. not rock rock. <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy Page actually recorded a lot of Zeppelin stuff on a telly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Zeppelin was recorded on a telly, but live, he played Les Paul. But again, well, you know, they're more of like blues rock, which yeah. would make sense. As soon as you introduce metal into the equation. When you think of ah, metal, <laughs> you yeah. don't, that's not, you don't, you're not going to hear a telly or a strat sound. Not so much. Now, Iron Maiden. Is the Iron Maiden listen, is the exception? Listen to this knowledge going on here. I've this. been around for a long time. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Get my shit off. The one <laughs> exception, Iron Maiden. Those guys did use strats, and so that's kind of like okay, Iron Maiden strats. But yeah, does anybody really like them? <laughs> Lots of people do. <laughs> Just Richie Blackmore, Deep Purple, used to strat. <laughs> But you're talking bluesiest. But yeah, as soon as you get into metal, yeah. I think of those three, Les Paul these, is definitely... These are definitely... people you're that have very bluesy roots. Yeah, well, the, the problem is Strats and Tellys all have single coil pickups, which don't do well for the distortion, high no, gain, beefiness. Chaga chaga. <laughs> yes, the goodness. <laughs> the Captain Crunch. Yes. Right? So I, I think if you're leaning into hard rock and metal, then Les Paul definitely wins. Although I would say followed closely, closely by the Explorer, Gibson Explorer, and a Flying V. Mm. So Flying V is a pretty metal, hard rock, yeah. I would put a V above oh, a Stratocaster yes. or a, a Tele, for sure. That doesn't mean that you can't play that stuff. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah, John 5, he's all about Her the metal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, tellies, yeah. But for me, it's, it's got to be Les Paul, I think. Uh, and Les Paul style guitars, like my Schecter Solo 6, which I love. And I got some Washburns and all that stuff. But yeah, definitely. What do you guys think? What is more hard rock metal? Tellies, Strats, or Les Pauls? Mm. Vote below. 
And with that question, which is a great one. It was. That's all the questions for this week. <laughs> so, yay! And we're leaving town tomorrow. So, you know, I guess we're, are we going to vlog on Saturday in Tulsa? Of course we are. Okay. Well, anniversary vlog. You should have the boys do vlog of them at home. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm scared. That would be so much fun. That could. Stop it, Aiden. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, Nicholas. 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 What? Nicholas. What? 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 Nothing. What? what? It's my birthday. We could. Nicholas could do it on his phone. He, he could, could totally do it. Aiden can too. That's true. Um, so we will be out of pocket a little bit this weekend. But uh, thank you for all the questions. If you have a question for next week, leave it below. <laughs> Leave your comments below, and I'm looking forward to reading those, and uh, looking forward to answering your questions yes. next week. All right? Yes. Until then. Thanks for all the compliments. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Mm -hmm. And the well wishes and the, all the good stuff. Thanks for being so sweet. Yeah, and we only had one dislike on the last <laughs> Asgard A. I know who it is. I think I know who it is. Because it's only on that. It's only on the Asgard A's. Yeah. It's, not, it's not anything else. But you're watching. You're watching it. And YouTube treats a thumbs down the same way as it treats a thumbs up. Mm. It's engagement. They're like, hey, people are engaging. So actually not watching and not engaging is actually bigger. Yeah, than if you really want to hurt my feelings. Thumbs down or negative comments. If you want to hurt my feelings and hurt us in some way, just don't Ignores watch. Completely. Don't watch at all. Or comment or anything. That's the best thing you can do if you want to be a meanie butthole. <laughs> meanie, 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 meanie. Meanie, meanie. All right. Hashtag meanie, meanie. Yes, and if you made it this... Yeah, if you made it this far, <laughs> the secret hashtag of the day is hashtag meanie meanie. M E A N I E. Yeah, like like bean. Beanie, but meanie. Yes. Hashtag meanie meanie. Or it should be hashtag meanie meanie jerk face. <laughs> meanie meanie butthole. <laughs> hashtag meanie meanie butthole. <laughs> Some people may not want to type the word butthole because it's yeah, offensive. It kind of is. We'll do hashtag meanie meanie. Okay. <laughs> and you will achieve legendary status. If yes. you make it to the end of our videos. And a lot of you guys and gals are making it to the end. So. I like all the damn it, gems. <laughs> yeah. That was great. <laughs> dang it, Jim. Hashtag dang it, Jim. Yeah. Hey, edit to this family friendly, Angela. <sighs> Potty mouth. Never. All right. We'll see you guys next video. So excited. Keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. We need the music. <gasps> you stole my line. Oh, did I? Yes. Well, I'm used to saying it by myself sometimes. In all the other videos, it's me. Oh, my God. It's because you don't include me. Oh, mm. okay. That's fine. And yes, for those of you wondering through the ages, I am immortal. Yeah. Yeah. She's a vampire. I'm her slave. Mm -hmm. Pretty much how it works. Hashtag Angela Immortal. <laughs> Hashtag Angela Immortal. Uh. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>